actress Millie Bobby Brown has a polarizing but effortless charm that has made her incredibly popular. So in today's video, we'll break down eight habits you can steal from Millie that will help you immediately make people like you. The first tip may seem counterintuitive, but Millie is at her most likable, not when she's trying to impress others, but when she is having a good time. If you've ever been at a party or bar and found yourself looking at the people who seem to be having the best time, you felt the magnetic effect of having fun. In Millie's case, She'll start water balloon fights, do silly dances between takes, or get people to play random games on set. Even when suffering through insanely spicy wings on Hot Ones, Millie continues to be goofy and have fun. Why did you do this to me? I'm only 18. <laughs> I'm only small. You got but it. I'm telling you, my, my face doesn't feel like my face. I can't feel my, my face when, when I'm, I'm with, with you. you. Literally, <laughs> literally. In addition to making you magnetic, establishing yourself as playful and goofy also helps you tease people in a way that makes them like you more instead of hurting their feelings, especially if you soften your tease with a laugh. For example, watch Millie tease Jimmy Fallon while playing a game about lying. How many? Four. Four. I know you are lying. How? Because you're horrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> the goal here isn't to fake laugh, it's to focus on teases that are playful, lighthearted, and genuinely make you laugh. Setting a playful tone early is crucial for these. If you don't, you can accidentally come off as rude. For example, watch earlier on that same Hot Ones episode when Millie's co-star Noah surprises her on the show. First, notice that her lower energy makes it seem like she isn't excited to see Noah. Do we have a little surprise here to open things up for wing one? We do have a surprise. Wow. Noah. Hello. Noah. Welcome. Glad to be here. On the spot, I giving us a little wings. assist here for wing one. So is this this is the mild one? Mm -hmm. Yep. She doesn't smile when he comes in, her tone is cold, and she doesn't look at him when he's speaking. Because she doesn't seem excited to see him, the tease in this next clip is more likely to be perceived as hurtful, even though she laughs through it. I'm much better with my <laughs> Well, they didn't invite you on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to be here for It's not spicy, is it? All right, now go watch me kill this. So while softening your tease with a laugh is a great habit, don't underestimate the importance of setting a playful positive vibe beforehand. If this was the only interaction you saw between Noah and Millie, you might wonder why Noah considers Millie his best friend. A big part of that is likely due to our third tip from today's video, mixing in compliments with your teases. This makes you less predictable than if your only way of interacting with someone is by giving them a hard time. And it makes people way more likely to laugh at your jokes than get offended. Here are a few quick examples. With this context in mind, it's much easier to understand why Noah would love Millie. The thing that Noah has always done so well is made me feel so comfortable, so empowered, mm. and you know, he is an amazing co-star to riff off of. There were like, there's so many spe special like right effects, and there's air, and there's noises, and the first take, you guys got it, and the reaction that you guys had was so beautiful. If you playfully tease people and get seen as rude, then this may be the part you're missing. When you tease someone, they don't just react to what's happening in the moment, they react to your overall relationship. This is why you and someone else can say the exact same thing, but they may get a big laugh and you may get a dirty look. If you really want to charm the people around you, pair your compliments with a warm platonic touch. These brief moments of touch help build feelings of trust and connection. I mm -hmm. would describe you as as um, relaxed. Yeah, I'd say relaxed. And I would I'm describe relaxed. you as charismatic. I'm a little spazzed That's sometimes. Nice. Okay, now let's get into a few habits that will help specifically when you're meeting new people. Some people struggle with early conversation when it isn't obvious what you can connect on. What if you can't tell immediately what you have in common with the other person? Millie was in a particularly weird spot as an early teen celebrity. A lot of her life was unrelatable to most people. For example, in this next clip with Stephen Colbert, he asks a young Millie about a photo of her crying on the last day of Stranger Things season three. Her response may rub people the wrong way, especially because of the tone she uses. And so when I had to say goodbye to my best friend, Sadie, I just broke down. Also catering, oh, that was a tough one. Catering? Yes, catering, <laughs> duh. Like saying goodbye to the people who do catering. Yes, saying goodbye to the people who make my food. I mean, seriously. Being sad that your caterers are gone is a hard thing for most people to connect with in conversation. But here's what you may not realize. You don't have to have the same lifestyle and interests to connect with someone. To bond with anyone, just talk about yourself in a way that makes your life relatable to theirs. Here's an example of Millie doing it well. She's asked what it's like to be so heavily scrutinized at a young age, and she does a great job of relating it to what any other teen can go through. You know, I'm being watched by everyone, and and basically every move I make is being watched by everyone. But but actually, it's not that quite. It's not that different in any way. I mean. There's teenagers out there that are evolving in themselves and they have to go to school every day and deal with 
whatever they're dealing with or whatever they're dealing with at home. And so for me, we all face the same complications. So for example, let's say you have a hobby that most people don't share. In honor of Stranger Things, we'll use D&D as an example. If you meet someone new who asks you what you do for fun and all you say is, I love playing D&D, you will only connect with them if they also love playing D&D. Compare that to something like, I love playing D&D, I have a weekly game with my friends, and it's a great way to make sure we all hang out at least once a week. Plus, I've always loved fantasy, so it's fun to co-create the stories I loved growing up. Now, even if they don't like D&D, they can relate to the fun of doing something with their friends or having something they love from their childhood. This bleeds into the next habit as well, which is hands down one of the most important habits if you want to make conversation with a new person flow more naturally. See if you can guess what it is from this next clip. Somewhere that you got your American accent from watching Hannah Montana. I did, I did. That is true? Yes, absolutely. Really? Yeah, because I, I watched Bugsy Malone and Godfather when I was like eight. I love Bugsy Malone. Yeah, I love it. You can make conversation easy for the other person by giving expansive answers. This doesn't have to be a super long monologue. Simply try to talk for 10 seconds longer than you normally would. Watch another example here. So yes. where, did you, where did you fly in from? LA. You were from oh, Los Angeles. It was the craziest trip because our two flights, these two flights had been mixed up. And then she launches into a quick story from there. Imagine if she just said, I flew in from LA. Suddenly the pressure is back on Jimmy to make the conversation flow. Especially when you're first meeting someone, conversation can feel stilted or forced. When you answer small talk questions with short answers, you contribute to that forced feeling because the other person has to work harder to come up with an interesting reply. Do you pick their outfits? Mm -hmm. You do? Is that fun for you? Mm -hmm. Do you design outfits for them? Mm -hmm. The flip side of this is you don't want to dominate the whole conversation by doing all the talking. You also want to turn the conversation back on the other person. Millie does this even in situations where the spotlight is meant to be on her, like in interviews. You're doing great. But I'm not gonna Tell me it. about your life. <laughs> From oh. Illinois, 70 years kids? ago. No kids. No kids, you don't want kids? All right, now I'm mentally and emotionally younger than you. So how is your wife? I saw her she at the is, Emmys. My wife is absolutely lovely I in every love way. I love her. I love her so much. Yeah. Making sure the other person gets to chime in helps make them feel valued. Similarly, if you're in a group conversation, you can answer a question and then pivot to ask the same question to someone in the group who hasn't spoken much. But I also want to know what was it like? Like, what was it like for you to do that? Like, you you also have to deal with stuff in high school, and then you also yeah. in season two dealt with the mind flare and everything like that. Like, what do you think is more difficult? Once you do get someone talking, focus on being a likable listener. It can be very powerful to make someone like you while they are the ones speaking. This point may surprise some of you since as a child, Millie got a rep for being a bad listener. She would cut people off in conversation or zone out while someone else was speaking, but she's come a long way. Now she has three great traits you can steal as a listener that will make people really enjoy speaking with you. First, you wanna give someone your full focus. Nothing feels worse than talking to someone only to have them look around like they're searching for something more interesting. Watch how intently Millie listens to Noah here, shifting her entire body as he begins to speak. Noah, we'll start with you. Um, yeah, what can we expect from the season? Another way to make people feel good when you're listening is with a big laugh. If you're funny or interesting, people will like you, but they'll like you even more if you combine that with making them feel like they are funny or interesting too. Again, the goal is not to be fake, but to freely express it when you do feel it. Here's a quick example. Gravity. <laughs> Gotta do a little John Mayer there. <laughs> and again, you can see how this makes it so easy for her to tease Noah and it seemed good natured. Yeah. Gravity. <laughs> For that. Gravity. <laughs> That's the, song. the last tip we'll touch on for being a likable listener. If you do want to chime in on what someone else is saying, use the agree and expand technique. This makes them feel heard. Instead of cutting them off and steamrolling what they built, you're adding to it. <laughs> do, do, do. It's like vibey. <laughs> so vibey. Like summer 2018. <laughs> I think this season was really just like more emotional for me and just more like personal and that's that's tough that's to, always tough yeah and it makes you actually sometimes more tired at the end of the day than yeah. it would if you're physically giving yourself to the work it's actually sometimes more true yeah, than you give yourself mentally the agree and expand technique is also a great way to handle when someone cuts you off Agree with them so they feel heard, then retake the conversational reins so you can finish your thought. Now, there's a lot going on in this video, and you may be wondering how the heck do you actually remember all of this when you're out meeting new people? Especially if you're speaking with someone who makes you nervous. It's hard to remember to put all this into practice. That's why we put together our program, Charisma University. It's a step-by-step 30-day -step program that tells you exactly what to do every day to take what you're learning and turn it into an unthinking habit. So by the end of 30 days, you radiate confidence and charisma naturally without even thinking about it. Rather than tell you about the program myself, here are a few things that past members have said. 
I had confidence in some areas, but not in others. Then Charisma University changed that for me. Since beginning the program, I have seen noticeable changes in my life. It has helped me unlock the confidence that comes with knowing that I can go into any social situation and crush it. Another member wrote, I've always been bad at expressing myself in situations that weren't one-on-one. -on -one. In conversations, I'd find myself hesitant to speak or I'd get caught in my own head overthinking things. After CU, I am now way more confident in saying what I think. I feel much happier all the time. I was even able to talk to a woman I've had a crush on for about a year and made a great first impression. Overall, I love this course and I keep going back to it when I need a refresher on the daily action modules. And lastly, one member wrote, Thank you so much for this program. After going through Charisma University, I've made more friends, have higher self-esteem, and can more easily talk to people I don't know. I've solidified my values and I know who I am. The program is literally guaranteed to change your life. That means you can take the entire course, and if you don't think it's worth every penny, you can give yourself a full refund from right inside the program. If you want to see if Charisma University is right for you, click the link on screen now or in the description below. Either way, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it, and I hope to see you in the next one.